Hey, we're going to look at solving some polynomial equations, and we're going to look at all varieties here, um, isolating the variable using roots and using the quadratic formula and factoring. So lots of things going on here. Uh, this is mostly meant to be a, a review. I'll be pretty thorough, but you might maybe should have had some experience with this before, especially factoring. Uh, let's get started. We're going to we're going to begin with solving polynomial equations where uh, the easiest way to do it is simply to isolate the variable, just get the variable by itself on one side. And we'll, we'll see how to do that with some basic examples first that all look very similar. So let's say in our first example, we want to solve the equation 2x minus 5 equals 9. And so in this case, this is a polynomial because this is a polynomial because we have power of x, it's to the first power. And because it's to the first power, it's linear. So this is a linear polynomial or a linear equation because x is to the first power, no higher power occurs. And so all we're gonna do here is get x by itself. So we'll add five to both sides and divide by two. And we can see that x equals seven is our solution. So no problem, we just got x by itself. Another example that's very similar is 2x squared minus 5 equals 9. And we're going to go through the same process here, um, except now we're going to isolate x squared instead of x. So we're going to get x squared by itself first. And by the way, this is this has a degree of 2. This had The first one had a degree of 1. The second one has a degree of 2. This is what we call a quadratic equation. Or quadratic polynomial. And so let's add 5 to both sides, divide by 2, and we don't know what x is, so we're not done. So we have to do one more step to get x by itself, and that step is to undo the second power. And the way I undo a power is with a root. So I'll take the second root, or the square root, of both sides. Now, a square root really has a 2 here, but we don't typically write it, just to be clear. So this is a square root if it's a 2 there. And the tricky thing about, you, if you're taking notes, you should probably write this down and highlight it somewhere, make a point of this. When you take an even root of both sides, 7 actually has two square roots, the positive square root and the negative square root. So you have to include a plus or minus. So again, you need the plus or minus when you take an even root of both sides. All right, on the left side, the square root cancels the square power, leaving x. And on the right side, we have plus or minus the square root of 7. So what that means is x could be two different things. It could be the positive square root of 7, or x could be the negative square root of 7. So both of these are acceptable ways to write the solution. Let's do another similar example. What if the power is the third power? Well, same idea. We're going to get x cubed by itself. So we're going to get come all the way down, do the same thing. We get x cubed equals 7, or x to the third power equals 7. To undo a power, you use the same root. So I'll take the third root, also called the cube root of both sides. And notice that the cube, or the third root, is an odd root. You do not have multiple cube roots of a number, multiple odd roots of any number. So in this case, you don't put a plus or minus. The third root cancels the third power, leaving x, and on the right side we just get one solution, the cube root of 7. Okay, so when can we use the isolate variable technique? Well, the, the thing that all of these have in common is there's only one instance of our variable, right? Um, we had a linear equation, a quadratic equation. This is a degree three or cubic equation. There was no lower powers of x in addition to the one we had. So these are all good cases where you might want to isolate the variable. Let's do one more example that's a little more complex than these where we isolate the variable. 
let's say we want to solve the equation, I don't know, three times x minus four squared plus nine equals one. Or how about, I don't know, let's, let's see, how about 18? So now we still only have one instance of our variable, x, but it's with a minus four. So what we're gonna do here is the same as we did before. We're gonna try to get the square part by itself. So I'm gonna subtract nine and divide by three. So let's subtract the nine. Divide by the three. And now we have to undo the second power. So we'll do a second root or a square root of both sides. Again, you don't have to write this index of two on your square root if you don't want to. But since we're taking an even root, we have to consider the positive and negative square roots of three. The root and the power cancel. So if x minus four equals plus or minus the square root of three. And now we add four over. Typically we put it in the front, so we'll have positive four plus or minus the square root of three. Just make sure the plus or minus stays with the square root of three, no matter where you put the four. You, if you prefer, you could have written this as plus or minus the square root of three, and then add the four outside. But typically we write it this way. And now we have two solutions. One of them is four plus the square root of three, or x could be four minus the square root of three. So this is an appropriate way to write your solution set. And this is an appropriate way to write your solution set. Sometimes if you're doing these problems online, they'll have you put both of the answers with a comma between them, all different ways you could enter your answer. Just uh, follow whatever instructions are provided. So again, here, we were able to isolate the variable because there was only one instance. Let's move on to examples where um, we might have to factor and or use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is probably something you should know, so I'll make sure to point that out. And some of these examples might use roots also. You can use all combinations of these techniques to solve an equation. So first of all, let's look at the quadratic formula. It says if you have a quadratic equation, so this is an x squared equation. So if you write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, in other words, you get a quadratic polynomial on the left side, and you think of the coefficients as a, b, and c, then there's a formula that tells you the two solutions. The formula is a fraction, big fraction bar on top. The solution is based on the coefficients a, b, and c. So the solution is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus all of four times a times c all over two a. Okay, and so when you apply this formula, you have to understand square roots. We've kind of been doing them a little bit above, but now we'll get a little more advanced. Uh, we'll practice simplifying some square roots and things like that. Um, okay, so let's let's also motivate uh, this this main idea. If we have I don't know, a bunch of unknown stuff multiplied together. A times B times C equals zero. You know, if you multiply three things together and get zero, what does that mean? Well, we don't, we don't know what A, B, and C are because they're unknowns, but we do know that at least one of them has to be zero. So A could be zero, or B could be zero, or C could be zero. One of those three at least has to be true. Maybe two of them, maybe three of them. So we're going to use that quite a lot, okay? All right, so let's start with some basic examples. Um, you know what, let's call this main ideas. This is main idea one. Main idea two um, is to factor 
if possible. Like if you can see that factoring works, then do that. That's pretty easy, okay? Um, so let's see an example. Let's start basic here. And say we want to solve an equation now that's already factored. So something like x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 equals 0. And again, the 0 here is so important. Because we know that if I multiply the two things together, I get 0. So using the 0 product property, I can say that, well, one of them has to be 0. x minus 2 has to be 0, or 3x plus 1 has to be 0. And so now I've got two linear equations that I can solve. I can get x by itself. So in the first instance, I can see that, well, x equals 2. Or if I subtract 1 and divide by 3, I can see that x equals negative 1 third. So I get two solutions. x could be 2 or x could be negative 1 third. And, and you, can, you can check these. Let's, you don't have to do this, but I'm, I want to illustrate it for you. If x equals 2, then we get... On the left side, we get 2 minus 2 times um, 6 plus 1. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0 times 7 is 0. So x equals 2 makes this true. If x equals negative 1 third, we get negative 1 third minus 2. And in the second equation, we get 3 times negative 1 third plus 1. Well, 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And 0 times anything is 0. And so that one works also. So we get two solutions. We won't, we won't check our solutions from here on, but I wanted to point that out, how that 0 product property works. OK, let's try something that's, that's not factored, but it's still quadratic. Let's say we want to solve the equation. Let's say we want to solve the equation negative 16x squared equals negative 16x plus 3. And we can see that in this equation, we have an x squared and an x. So we can't just get x by itself. So if we can't get x by itself, let's get 0 on one side. We saw how important that 0 is, so I'll add 16x and I'll subtract 3. So I get negative 16x squared plus 16x minus 3 equals 0. And this is a quadratic equation, but again, I've got an x squared term and an x term. So I might try factoring. And if I want to try factoring them, I'm, I'm looking at the AC method. Uh, but before I do that, actually, let's since this first term is negative, let's Let's pull that negative out, or even we could multiply both sides by a negative 1 to get rid of it, and that won't mess up our 0 either. So let's, let's, let's factor it out instead, because I think that's probably what most students would think to do. Let's factor out the negative on the left side, leaving positive 16x squared minus 16x plus 3 equals 0. And now we can try the AC method. We need two numbers that multiply to be 16 times 3, which is 48. And so they have to, they have to multiply to equal 48. They have to add to equal negative 16. So I'm looking at negative 12 and negative 4. So I'll break my middle term down to be negative 12x minus 4x plus 3. I split my middle term. Now I'll use grouping on the inside. So in my first two terms, I can pull out a 4x, leaving behind a 4x minus 3. In my second two terms, I'm going to pull out a negative 1. When I do that, that also leaves a 4x minus 3. And we're almost done factoring. Keep my negative. These two groups have a 4x minus 3 in common. When I pull out the common 4x minus 3, I'm left with a 4x minus 1, and that equals 0. OK, good. So we've gotten 0 on one side. We we were able to factor the other side. Now we can use that 0 product property, where um, we have three things multiplied to be 0. The first guy is a negative 1. There's no variable there. That can't ever be 0. So that means 4x minus 3 has to be 0.
or 4x minus 1 has to be 0. And in this case, if we add 3 and divide by 4, we can see that x equals 3 fourths, or in this case, x equals 1 fourth. And we get two solutions. So that was a great example of having to get 0 on one side and then factoring. Let's try another one. Let's say we have, oh, I don't know. Let me see what I've got here. Um, how about 3x squared um, minus x equals negative 5? Again, we can't get x by itself because it occurs twice, so instead I'll add 5 over to get 0 on the right side. And if I wanted to try to factor 3 times 5 for the AC method is 15, I can't multiply two numbers to get 15 that add to be negative 1. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula because this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 where a is 3, b is negative 1, and c is 5. So we get x equals negative b, so negative, negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 3 times 5. The square root goes over all of that, the fraction bar goes underneath all of this, and that's all over 2 times a, so 2 times 3 is 6. So cleaning that up, we get 1 plus or minus the square root, negative 1 squared is positive 1, minus 4 times 3 is 12, times 5 is 60, all over 6. So we get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 59 over 6. And you might recall the square root of a negative or negative 1 is what we call the imaginary number i. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split up my square root of negative 59 to be the square root of negative 1 times 59 over 6. So I get 1 plus or minus. The square root of negative 1 comes out of there and turns into just an i, leaving behind a square root of 59, and that's all over 6. Okay? So that's a perfectly, so you get imaginary solutions here. That's a perfectly good way to write the answer. Or you could write it as 1 sixth plus or minus. So basically what I'm going to do is split it so that um, 1 is divided by 6, and then the i squared 59 is divided by 6. So 1 sixth plus or minus the square root of 59 over 6, and lots of times we'll put the i out to the side so that we can see uh, this is a standard form for a, for a complex number. Uh, don't have to do that, but that's one way to do it. And what that means is there's two solutions x equals 1 sixth plus the square root of 59 over 6 times i, or x equals 1 sixth minus the square root of 59 over 6 times i. So all three of these are suitable ways to write your solution. Just understand no matter how you write it, there are two solutions. Okay, let's kind of put all of this together to solve an equation now. Let's say we've got, um, I don't know, how about 3x squared times, um, how about 5x squared minus 2 times, um, how about, 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. This is kind of an obnoxious example, but the point is 
the basic things we've learned make this pretty simple to solve. Because we've got things multiplied to be zero, three things multiplied to be zero, we can say that one of them has to be zero. 3x squared has to be zero, or 5x squared minus 2 has to be zero, or 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 has to be zero. And now we just have to solve each of these equations. So here, we can simply get x by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 3 and take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of 0 is 0. So we don't need a plus or minus. We don't need a square root because it's only 0. So that's one solution. Here we have one instance of x as well. So let's get x by itself. So we'll add 2 and divide by 5. So x squared equals 2 fifths which means that x equals plus or minus the square root of that fraction. This is, in my mind, this is a perfectly acceptable way to write this answer. However, we've got a square root of two on top and a square root of five on bottom. Um, lots of times it's beneficial not to have a square root on the bottom. So the way we're gonna fix that is multiplying the top by a square root of five and the bottom by a square root of five. So we're basically multiplying the bottom by itself. And notice that this guy equals one. So we're, we're multiplying this by something, but it's one. And when you multiply by one, you're not changing anything. You just change the way it looks. So if we do that on the top, we get the square root of two times the square root of five is the square root of 10. And on the bottom, the square root of five times the square root of five is the square root of 25. Now. We still have a square root on the bottom, but the square root of 25 is simply five with no square root. So there are two more solutions. X could be zero, X could be the positive square root of 10 over five, X could be the negative square root of 10 over five. Okay, this last guy is a quadratic equation. We can't get X by itself directly, so we have to factor it or use the quadratic formula. So if we wanna try the AC method, 2 times 1 is 2. When you multiply to equal 2, we need to add to equal negative 2. Um, it looks like the only way to multiply to get 2 is 1 and 2, and we can't use those in any way to, to add to be negative 2. So we're gonna, let's use the quadratic formula. A is 2, B is negative 2, and C is 1. So negative B is positive 2 plus or minus the square root of B squared negative two squared is four, minus four times a times c, all over two times a, two times two is four. Then we'll simplify, we get four minus eight, that's the square root of negative four over four. Made my square root a little long here. And the square root of the negative is an i, the square root of four is two, so this whole thing turns into two i. Now, we can simplify this a little bit. I like the idea of splitting it up to be two fourths, that's one half, plus or minus two fourths, which is another one half, times i. And there are our last two solutions. So we end up with five total solutions for x to this equation. We could plug in any of those five solutions and make this equation true. Okay, let's keep going with examples. I want to be thorough here and give you plenty to look at. Let's say we want to solve the equation negative 2x squared plus 11x cubed equals x. We've got x's everywhere. So let's get zero on one side. So let's subtract the x over. And let's go ahead and put the left side in descending order. So I'll have positive 11x cubed, my negative 2x squared. If I subtract my x over, I get minus x equals zero. And you know I can't get x by itself directly, so let's factor. I can definitely pull an x out of all of this, leaving x times 11x squared minus 2x minus one. And then I still have, uh, you know, I've got two things multiplied to be zero. So I can say x 
equals zero. So there's one solution already. Or 11x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals zero, which this is a quadratic equation. I could try to factor it. But there's no way I can multiply to get negative 11 and add to get negative 2. So I've got to use the quadratic formula. So I get x equals negative negative 2, which is positive 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 11 times negative 1. And that's all over 2 times 11, which is 22. So I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 11 times negative 1 is negative 44. Still all over 22. So I get 2 plus or minus. 4 minus negative 44 is the same thing as 4 plus 44, which is 48 over 22. And now I need to simplify the square root of 48 by looking at for any perfect squares that go into it. Well, the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 48 is 16, and it goes in three times. So I can rewrite my 48 as the perfect square 16 times the non-perfect square, 3, all over 22. Well, the square root of 16 is just 4. So I get 2 plus or minus 4 square roots of 3, all over 22. And then if I want, I can split this apart, because I can see 2 and 22 will reduce, 4 and 22 will reduce. So I can say 2 over 22, which reduces to 1 11th plus or minus 4 square roots of 3 over 22. The 4 would reduce to a 2, and the 22 would reduce to 11. So I get 2 square roots of 3 over 11. And there are the other two solutions. So I get three possible solutions to this equation. OK, so we've seen some factoring with trinomials. We've seen some quadratic formula, zero product property. Let's do. Uh, a couple more examples that are similar looking but are solved differently. Let's say I want to solve, uh, how about, I don't know, 9x squared equals x. And let's compare that to um, 9x squared equals 1. So in the first equation, there's two instances of x. So I can't get x by itself. So I need to get 0 on one side by subtracting x. And now on the left side, I can factor out an x. And I, now I've got two things multiplied to be 0. So one of them has to be 0, which means if I solve the equations, I can see that x has to be 0 or x has to be 1 9. Now, the second example, I don't have two instances of x. All I have to do here is get x by itself. So I'll divide by 9 and then take the square root of both sides, remembering that I need a plus or minus because it's an even root. And then the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 9 is 3. So my two solutions are plus or minus. One third. All right, that was fast, but also long. Wanted to give you lots of examples of solving polynomial equations because it's such a fundamental skill in algebra. There are lots of instances of different types of equations you can see, but you should be in pretty good shape if you know how to use the square root property, the zero product property, factoring, and the quadratic formula. Uh, so Go find some practice and, and master these skills and have some fun.